Welcome hunters to a comprehensive guide aimed at elevating your mastery of the bow in Monster Hunter. Aspiring archers and seasoned marksmen alike, today we delve into advanced techniques and strategies that will sharpen your skills and unleash the true potential of this elegant yet powerful weapon. The bow is a weapon of finesse, requiring precision, agility, and a deep understanding of its mechanics to build effectively. In this video, we'll uncover 5 advanced tips that go beyond the basics, offering you insights and tactics that will elevate your bow gameplay to new heights. So, prepare to string your bow, charge up your shots, and embark on a journey where we'll unravel the intricacies of these ranged weapons. Without further ado, Let's dive into these advanced techniques and tactics that will refine your prowess with the bow in Monster Hunter. A few others and I used to think that by performing the charge evade move, you'll fire off power shot faster. That's slightly true. However, there is no difference in a full cycle of firing off your primary shot and power shot. If you're standing still, you'll fire off your primary shots quicker than you would if you had performed a charge evade move. However, if you perform a charge evade move, you'll fire off power shots slightly quicker. To sum it up, standing still fires primary shot quicker, while charge evade move fires power shot faster. Both difference in speed nets off, and if we were to combat them side to side, both methods are effectively at the same speed. I have the habit of using charge evade, even if the monster is on the ground. At this point, it's really just master memory. The advantage of using charge evade is that the monster would always aim the location you were initially at, even if you have already moved off half a second ago. This means that you dodge out of the way and fire instead of firing first and having to dodge out of the way later on. By now, we know that all shot types have their own critical distance. If we are out of the critical distance, our damage drops by half. If we are way out of range, our arrows can't even do a single damage. However, special attack does not care about range, and it is always in effective range. If you are against any monster that charges past you, you may consider using a special attack instead of chasing after the monster. There are three attack types in Monster Hunter games. Cutting or severing, blunt, and ranged shots. Both shots are considered ranged attacks. This image on screen was taken from MHN.Quest. This shows where to hit to do the most damage. If you're against Diablos, it would make sense to aim the wing since that has the highest damage. However, if you use Dragon Piercer on the wings, it deals white color damage numbers. This means that Somehow, it isn't the weak spot anymore. This is because the bow special attack is a severing attack and not a range attack, even though we fire it out, and that technically means it's a range attack. Severing attack means that it is capable of cutting off tails. If we look at the chart for Diablos, the body and tail is weak to severing attacks, so if we want to aim our special attack, do not aim for the wings, but aim at the body and tail. Use mhn.quest to check out where is a good spot to fire off your special attack for the different monsters. Hi Sean A, do you even have any proof on what you have said? Hey Sean B, yes I do indeed have some proof. Anjanaf's tail is not weak to range, but our special attack damage number is yellow. Another video proof right here, Sean A. This is against Diablos, and you can see that the range attacks on wings deals yellow damage numbers, while the special attack, which may I remind you again, is a severing attack, deals white damage numbers to the wings. Hmm, that's kind of sus. Do you have more proof? Yep. Niantic has come forth in the forum to state right there that Dragon Piercer deals severing damage. Thank you Sean A for your explanation. No problem Sean B, I love you. Ha! 
Gay. Okay. <laughs> Before we wrap up this tip, these following attacks are categorized as such. Severing attacks include all attacks that can cut tails, great sword attacks, but not the slap or shoulder tackle, sword and shield attacks, but not the shield bash attacks, light bow gun slicing ammo, and bow's dragon piercer. Blunt attacks to the head builds up KO damage. For blunt attacks, we have all hammer attacks, light bow gun sticky ammo, great sword shoulder tackle, great sword slap attack, and sword and shield shield bash attacks. Range attacks are well range attacks. These attacks generally have effective range, and your damage drops off if you are out of the effective range. All of Bow's normal attacks, Light Bogan's normal, piercing, and spread ammo, and lastly, Light Bogan's special attack. Now, this special attack is not affected by effective range. When we dodge at the right time, we will be able to perform a perfect evade move. Immediately after that, if we were to fire off, we will fire off charge level 3 shots. However, if we were to tap and hold after perfect evade, we can charge it up from charge 3 to charge level 4. You could also tap and hold and evade after perfect evade to charge evade into level 4 shot. This may sometimes help you get into a better position to hit weak spots. You don't have to evade to the sides all the time. If you want to get out of the way and yet still move towards the monster, you can face diagonally and move forward. That way, you move towards the monster and yet not in the line of fire. Last but not least, when you want to shoot a moving monster, note that your arrows do not instantly get to where you are aiming at. It takes time to fly there. Hence, if a monster is moving, try to position yourself and aim to the front of where the monster is going. That way, the arrows will meet the monster's head. It is not easy, and you may not get all your arrows to land on the head, but it is probably better than just shooting the body. So yeah, there you go. These are my 5 slightly advanced tips for bow, and I hope this helps you become a better bow player. Comment down below if you have any better tips to share with everyone else. You probably do. I would like to conclude this video with a quote from a very famous warrior back in the days in Japan. Our Lord and Savior Tanjiro has once said, <laughs> So, as usual, please like this video if it has helped you out and do consider subscribing to my channel too if you have yet to do so. Sub so that you can be that top 10 cool kids who comment first. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.